As a star on the popular Saved by the Bell in the early 90s, Elizabeth Berkley was a household name to millions of teens. Then she disappeared. Or did she? From Broadway star to successful author, the showgirls actress never really went away. While some argued that Elizabeth Berkley should have stayed on Saved by the Bell until the very end, she had bigger and better things in mind. The Michigan native bowed out of her Jesse Spano role in 1992, deciding not to appear in almost half of season four. She wasn't the only one, however, as her castmate Tiffany Thiessen, who played Kelly Kapowski, also left. While Berkeley kept quiet about her intentions behind leaving the show, many assumed she desired to branch out as an actor. However, the decision could have backfired on her. Some casting directors might have branded Berkeley as a quitter, which wouldn't have helped her score roles in the future. Regardless of her intentions, Berkeley decided to leave before she was aware that the network added more episodes. At the time, the cast had already filmed the series finale when 11 additional episodes were ordered. Berkeley's breakout role came knocking in 1995 when she starred in the film Showgirls as lead character Nomi Malone. The story revolves around Malone's journey from small town stripper to Las Vegas showgirl and all the road bumps and heartbreak in between. We take the cash, we cash the check, we show them what they want to see. While it could have landed Berkeley on the map as a solid actor, it did the exact opposite, racking up terrible reviews that only stunted her growth. Entertainment Weekly dubbed it the worst movie of the year, ripping apart Berkeley's attempt at the big leagues. That kind of false start did a number on Berkeley, who later admitted how traumatic it was to be cast aside when she felt she had done right by her character. She told People in 2020, Of course, it was disappointing that it didn't do well, but there was so much cruelty around it. I was bullied, and I didn't understand why I was being blamed. The job as an actor is to fulfill the vision of the director, and I did everything I was supposed to do. Berkeley was cast aside after her starring role in Showgirls, left to fend for herself as horrible reviews tainted her burgeoning career. She told People that even her former castmates helped fan the flames, making it even harder to attain future roles. Berkeley told the outlet, No one associated with the film spoke up on my behalf to protect me. I was left out in the cold, and I was a pariah in the industry I had worked so hard for. One of the things is, you know, you take risks, and with that comes sometimes a beating. Shortly after the film, Berkeley was left without an agent, as the one she had been working with dropped her in the aftermath. The outcry from showgirls seemed to be directly solely at her, as her male counterparts and the film's director weren't part of the backlash. Even the film's director, Paul Verhoeven, couldn't understand why Berkeley became the scapegoat. He told the Los Angeles Times, I think she did exactly what we wanted and what we thought would be good, and apparently we failed. She eventually landed a role in the 1996 film The First Wives Club, alongside Diane Keaton and Goldie Hawn. The movie proved to be one of Berkeley's favorite projects, thanks to Hawn's mentorship. When acting jobs weren't exactly lining up for Berkeley, she tried her hand at theater. Unfortunately, her deviation didn't exactly pan out in her favor. Berkeley took on the role of Honey in the 1999 play Lenny, alongside the British comedian Eddie Izzard. She pulled off an impressive performance, even earning a positive nod from one critic. A few years later, in 2004, Berkeley made her Broadway debut when she starred in Sly Fox. This time around, however, she didn't have as positive of reviews. A review in Variety said, Berkeley mostly fails to mine the comic gold lining the script. For some women, having two men fight over them is a dream. For others, like Berkeley, it meant an impending lawsuit. Berkeley found herself at the center of a huge controversy in 1998 when she caught the eye of Leonardo DiCaprio while she was seeing her then boyfriend, Roger Wilson. The Titanic actor had reportedly flirted with the former sitcom star at the premiere of his film The Man in the Iron Mask, but she refused his advances. DiCaprio didn't budge, however, and continued to call Berkeley, much to Wilson's dismay. Wilson ended up confronting DiCaprio, leading the latter to tell his posse to kick his ass, according to court documents obtained by Entertainment Weekly. After the brawl, Wilson alleged he suffered a blow to his throat, preventing him from future singing roles. He filed suit against DiCaprio, asking for $15 million in compensatory damages and $30 million in punitive damages for the lost opportunities. The lawsuit against the Wolf of Wall Street star was ultimately thrown out. While Berkeley was merely a pawn in the ordeal, some speculate that it painted her in a bad light. On top of battling sexist backlash from showgirls, the actor was once again at the mercy of powerful Hollywood higher-ups. DiCaprio's distaste over the debacle could have rubbed off on Berkeley, making it that much harder to be taken seriously in the industry. While Berkeley may not have struck gold in terms of post-sitcom acting jobs, she did hit the jackpot when it came to her husband. In 2003, she married into major fashion royalty when she tied the knot with Greg Lauren, the nephew of famous designer Ralph Lauren. The pair met in a chance encounter in 2000 after a dance class had them crossing paths. 
Three years later, Berkeley walked down the aisle in a Cabo San Lucas wedding ceremony in a custom-made Ralph Lauren gown. It was a full-circle moment for Greg, who admitted to crushing on his future wife back in her Saved by the Bell days. Nowadays, he says people are often jealous knowing he wed his leading lady. He told Us Weekly, People either hit me or push or they don't even talk to me anymore. I got Jessie. Sorry, Slater. When she's not taking on roles in the industry, she's happy to spend time with her husband in Los Angeles. Berkeley's acting jobs have come second to her and Greg's son Sky, who was born in 2012. Being a mother ushered in a new phase, much different than her red carpet past. Berkeley told People, As an actress, sometimes you get cast in a job and you have to just go. I like how this has been its own journey, and there is time for what is the role of a lifetime. Perhaps Berkeley's less-than-stellar acting roles have something to do with her inability to accept criticism. In a 2005 New York Times piece, former Variety chief theater critic Charles Isherwood called out Berkeley for responding to his poor review of her performance in Sly Fox, but it wasn't only that grievance that she wanted to bring to his attention. The former Saved by the Bell star also expressed her disappointment in Isherwood for continuing to bash her performance in Showgirls. At the time, Isherwood had mentioned Berkeley alongside the film in a small article for the newspaper. Isherwood wrote in the New York Times, I had identified her as the star of the movie, now several years old, famed for its breathtaking awfulness. She was tired of being tagged in print exclusively as the star of a movie famed for its breathtaking awfulness. While he recalled Berkeley's attempts at highlighting some of her more favorable projects, like her role in a Broadway play and starring in a Woody Allen film, Isherwood had trouble differentiating her from her past. He quipped in the New York Times article, Her renown still derived primarily from her appearance in the unspeakable movie. The bold move by Berkeley crossed a boundary between critics and actors that typically never blend. On the contrary, it earned her a bit of praise from Isherwood for her role in David Rabe's play Hurley Burley, which she had been starring in at the time. He wrote, By way of making amends for my past sin, I hereby spread the word that she's pretty darn good." Berkeley found a new career path in 2011 when she released her first book, Ask Elizabeth, Real Answers to Everything You Secretly Wanted to Ask About Love, Friends, Your Body, and Life in General. The actress was inspired to write a diary style as an aid to the millions of teenage girls in the world struggling to find their identity in the brutal world that can otherwise be classified as high school. After Saved by the Bell went into international syndication, she was constantly recognized by younger women in her day-to-day -day life who were seeking advice. Berkeley eventually launched professional workshops, traveling to different schools across the country to work specifically with young women and help them navigate their teenage years. She told Entertainment Weekly, "...everyone just talks about the problems our teenage girls are facing and what they're dealing with, but there was, to me, a void in how they were being served or helped. I thought, wow, I'd love to create something." I want to give them something, like an antidote to that problem, a place for them to connect with one another and help each other." Building on that momentum, she went on to release her own form of a tell-all, catered to helping the younger generation. Unlike many tell-all celebrity books, Berkeley's fared well. Ask Elizabeth was met with rave reviews and a nearly five-star rating on Amazon. Entertainment Weekly wrote in its review, "...Berkeley hits a tone that's neither condescending nor above the reader's head. Her empathy is refreshing, and though her background gives her the experience and material necessary to write a book like this, it doesn't become the forefront of why she's writing." Berkeley never could quite build on her Saved by the Bell momentum into the 2000s and 2010s. The showgirl star dabbled in a few TV projects, starring in episodes here and there in New Girl, CSI Miami, and other shows. As of 2024, her last film project was Lucky Christmas in 2011. Whether she's busy with motherhood or enjoying the residuals of her successful book, Berkeley is impressed to keep her resume evergreen. She's appeared in a total of four projects ever since Lucky Christmas debuted, and at this rate, it doesn't seem like she has plans to snag an Oscar or Emmy anytime soon. Berkeley returned to Bayside High once again, this time as the guidance counselor in a reboot of Saved by the Bell that debuted on Peacock in 2020. Reviving her role as Jessie Spano, she reunited with her former castmates Mark Paul Gosseler and Mario Lopez. The transformation from carefree teenager to guidance counselor was one Berkeley was happy to bring to life on screen, giving some much-needed joy for viewers after the COVID-19 pandemic. She told Collider, "...so as we've evolved as human beings, and we're now women and men who have families, children, and all of that, we wanted to reflect in a comedic way, of course, where our characters would have grown into. Berkeley even got to work behind the scenes as a producer, helping cast roles for the revival. She told Collider, "...I was at every session and watched every link. I was with people for their chemistry reads. That was really exciting. We have a couple of people who are super seasoned in the industry, but most of the cast is fresh and new." Years after Showgirls tainted her reputation on screen, Berkeley looks back on her past with a new perception, one that hopefully means more open minds, especially when it comes to women in the industry. She shared to Collider, "...it was a different time in our culture in 1995. I don't know if that would have been met with the same harsh criticism now."